What's up, everybody? This is episode 10 of Nutrier. Drizzen, Ajax, you already know him. Yeah, you already know. We're reaching double digits on it once again. Yeah, back let's here. go. Episode 10. Uh, so basically, we want to talk about a lot of people have been contacting me either through email or like social media about like, how do I get started in community work? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, and talking about like sponsorships and like, you know, um, you know stuff like that. Because, like, you know, everyone everyone knows now you're a Flashpoint. So, so like, like for me, like... For, I don't even know this yet. So mm -hmm. I'm like, me asking you, like, did they reach out to you? You reach out to them? Mm -hmm. did, like, Chavo was like, hey, Ajax is, does all this fucking great work. And like, mm -hmm. like, how did they even just, like, get started? Well, um, we're going to take it take it back a step first. Just okay, going go back ahead, man. to uh, the, what you said when it comes to getting involved in the community and everything first. Um, it, you know, you, can't, you don't just get picked up by some of these things by just being that rando gym. Exactly. And thinking that they're going to pick you up. You have to have all your bases covered. You have to have a quality of work. You have to know. Um, it's almost like going into a regular job interview. Like, what separates you from this person? What makes you so special yeah. that I want to have you represent my team? Because that's really all it is. You're representing the team as the, the face of the franchise. Yeah, yeah. They need to get something out of you because what they want is, like, advertisement. They want people to see from their sponsors. They want to see the, mm -hmm. the names of the players. Uh, not only attaining high levels, but really making their presence known amongst communities. Yeah. Uh, as for me, I got lucky uh, with the fortune of being able to meet Bovi himself while you're I was not at lucky, Evo. Man. You're not lucky. You do a lot of great work, man. Don't <laughs> well, undercut yourself. Well, I mean, you know, I like I do. I had the quality of work, sure, but um, just from what happened with me, from my particular circumstance, uh, Kogar Asuma was originally with Flashpoint, and then yeah. Chapel got picked up by them as the static teammate of Koga. Yeah. Also being a power ranked player in the area as well, mm -hmm. which really, as soon as he got that sponsorship, Chavo just started like taking off. He started playing so much better because oh, yeah. he had something oh, yeah. more to go. Me, when I was in Evo, um, I had just finished playing my bracket. I just missed day two qualifier. That's mm -hmm. the best I've ever done in a national. And I was all amped up happy. And then all of a sudden they came over, they were talking. And Bovi throughout the weekend uh, was hanging out with us. He stayed at our house. Uh, that we had rented, and we ended up going out to breakfast. We ended up getting a booth um, that was right next to where the Disney Channel and ESPN, like, actual broadcasting was happening. Okay. Like, in my booth, I look to the right, and I see D1 sitting next to mine. And then to our left is, like, the ESPN Disney owners slash, like, uh, people they sent to represent the the companies out. I was like, holy crap. This yeah. man's got some money. But, um, you know, I was able – I set up a relationship with them there. And then just like any job, yeah. I sat on an application. Um, I gave, They gave me an interview, and I did my job to convince them what I can do for them. As not a player who's – you know, I'm not getting top eights and stuff like that. That's yeah, not me. Yeah. But I represent a different aspect. I come from a commentary standpoint where I get to have my face shown on screen a lot. Mm -hmm. Like I get more face time than the average player unless they're making it far. Yeah. So I was able to sell to them the fact that I'm going to be in the face of the people who are watching the stream mm -hmm. on a regular wearing this. Yeah. So people will know. They'll be able to see where I come from, who I am. They'll get more follows. They get more um, attention and all that. And they go out. They uh, pay for our hotel. Um, they'll cover our entry fee and stuff like that too. So there's a lot of stuff to it. One of the things that I think too many people get caught up in when they're trying to find a sponsor mm -hmm. is that they're just pretty much willing to accept anybody who sends them an email. That is a recipe for disaster. Because oh, yeah, when you definitely. just decide to pick up on anyone, there's a lot of people who are willing to take advantage of those uh, players. When they want to come up, they want to be a part of, be that new big face. They want to be that new big name. And then you get random sponsor number 10 who sends you an email that says, hey, I want a percentage of your winnings we'll give you something down the road. Mm -hmm. But for now, we want something. And we're not going to give you really much anything. Sometimes that pans out. Other times, after those few months, you try to get in contact with them, all of a sudden, they're nowhere to be found. Yeah, yeah. And it it's, it, it's, it happens. And you, you want to make sure that when you're looking into sponsorships, that you're looking into ones who have reputable sources, uh, maybe you're already established. You want to really go into the ones that are like brand new, unless you know them directly. Mm -hmm. Like say, say it's a local thing. Like when you were, uh, when, when you were kind of sponsoring like Ling Ling and stuff, mm -hmm. you were local. So he knew you from here. So yeah, it's a yeah. different, it's a different standpoint. He found you here, but 
if you don't know somebody online, you probably should maybe back off a little bit. Yeah. And make sure your body of work is legit. Don't be that guy who goes and gets fifth place at the tournament every single week at a 10-man local <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and try and think that you can convince somebody to uh, take you over. Maybe you can. Maybe you have that extra special quality. Maybe you are the next Leo who just happens to be at a 10-man weekly. You really need to prove it, though. Like You have to really put that effort in. So it's, it's, not, it's not something that just happens like that. Uh, you really have to have something special that separates you from other people. Uh, because they they see it every day. They mm -hmm. see they see ten, uh, a bunch of emails from a bunch of different people who have nothing to give to them. And a lot of people think they have everything to give to them when they really don't have much at all. And you have to you have to have the ability to say to yourself, you know what? Maybe I do suck, or maybe I don't have enough yet. But I'm gonna work to get it. Yeah, exactly. When you can, anybody who has enough motivation can get there. You just have to be willing to put in the work. Yeah, you put in a lot of work through commentary. So I mean, like you've been there for since what, like week. Maybe week, like 15, like, maybe? Uh, here, I'd say it was about like week 10 or so-ish, yeah. Yeah. Um, I tried hopping on. I think it was after the first invasion was mm -hmm. when I started here. I used to do my own commentary back when I did it in Waterbury, mm -hmm. but that was like local stuff. For yeah. where it was just like, it, it, you know, it, it was very minimal exposure. So, uh, But still, that's part of the grind. Like going from next to no exposure to where people are like, oh, why do you even bother to commentate? There's like no one watching the videos. And then all of a sudden, when there's a bunch of people watching the videos, and you weren't the one who's putting in that work to try and get there, the yeah. person who just so happens to be on there is going to be the one to get attention. But also, uh, from that standpoint, just to touch on commentary real fast, um, it's like the commentators are what people see. It yeah, represents yeah, yeah, yeah. the store. Like you have to be able to set a good standard to get people to to really want to be attached to your show. And I won't touch on it too much because I know that you guys touched on this. During the commentary episode, oh, it's fine, so man. Because like, we 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 wanted you actually here, but we just don't have a third mic, bro. <laughs> it's all good. Because I, I would definitely want you and Ag, and then like uh, there's another person I want to get like mm. everybody in the same room to give all the commentary. Like even like if it was like you, Ag, and like Hazmat, mm -hmm. I would love to do that episode. So I mean oh, something yeah, no, like I, that. So, I mean like we always can revisit it. I mean that's fine, but like yeah, I would absolutely be willing to do that. I love Ag. He's uh he's been. The guy who, like, when we first started to really try and set a standard for I commentary know, yeah. around here, man, he was... AG's awesome, man. Yeah, he, he goes out of his way to um, re really be, like, that great color commentary. Like, I think it was Flambeau said it best. He said he's the best color commentator on the East Coast. Yeah. Like, he, he's just... He's so quick-witted. But he's also just a genuinely, like, decent guy when you get to know him. And he was, like, always willing to give me advice when oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't normally get people to want to go out of the way to do that. Because I'm very hard on myself. I like to try and set a new standard for myself because I never think what I'm doing is good enough. But that's just because I want to achieve more. Yeah. So, and uh, just having someone like that around is awesome. And then Hazmat. You yeah. know, I mean, what, what, yeah, there's just like, there's so many people who like, they want to commentate and they want to get in a position where like, oh, I want to become like the next D1 or whatever, but they're not yeah. want to put in the work. Like, I mean, look at take, you know, take you for example. Like, it's been what, 2016. Mm -hmm. Like literally, probably like nineteen months of mm -hmm. grinding at UG and like getting on like Shine and stuff mm -hmm. like that till you know finally get to like I'm finally not finally getting noticed, but like I'm finally mm -hmm. got that you know like going, I finally reached that point and now I can now I'm, now other doors are opening up for me and stuff mm -hmm. you know like you have to put in the work, man. Yeah, it was That's like when a people solid, don't want to work. Yeah, it was like a solid year and people a half just want plus, shit man. for free, man. Oh, well, <laughs> we're in a generation of instant gratification, so everybody just wants, like, that instant like button to make everything work yeah. for them, but that's not the way it works. Like, it took yeah, me a like long a lot, time. Yeah, like, a lot of people look at me and they're like, oh, my, you got the store, you got, like, UG is mm -hmm. popping, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, motherfuckers don't understand that, like, mm -hmm. there's there's months that, that UG where, like, the venue fees don't cover a thing, and I take losses every single month just mm -hmm. to keep the store open for my you know the community that i've grown like people just don't understand that people just mm -hmm. think like oh you make like so much money no i'm not rich mm -hmm. like <laughs> i'm not rich at all like people just don't understand that people just like i'm still grinding I'm trying to figure out ways to build my invasions up like we've been struggling at like 50 to like 60 people and hopefully these new things that we came up with that can increase in tennis you know like mm -hmm. it's just a grind people just don't want to put in the work i i'm putting in the work now so i mean like even though it's been i've been out in the scene maybe for like i think going on four years now like nobody knows what the shit that i've been through like mm -hmm. going out renting out uh uh halls for like 400 dollars, trying to get you know this is back before uh smash 4 even started like mm -hmm. 
getting a getting a uh, renting out a, a spot for 400 bucks um, for PM and melee run the tournaments like if you don't know me from like four years ago and you're talking like stuff about me now like you don't know understand how much I grinded mm -hmm. for the community for Connecticut man like yeah that's just don't understand yeah like there's a you know the, like just to to while we're here to hop on this topic too mm -hmm. like there's a lot of people who always wonder how do i begin my own community how i start something in my state like say fucking start yeah just start just <laughs> like, just go for damn. it like uh like like say say some random spot i don't know i'm just gonna pull a random state like north dakota, north dakota or something like that right i don't okay. know anybody from north dakota i've never heard it so if you want to be that person to set up that thing like what you did you brought a bunch of systems out what i did at the end of every shift of my uh my job at on thursdays i'd fly home go get my two setups go get like five people from different sections of water break and bring them for like a 12-man local yeah but it you have to do that you have to be yeah, the one you have to to start up. at your own house it doesn't mm -hmm. matter man it doesn't matter you got to start somewhere mm -hmm. every little bit um same thing with like fgc and stuff like that you know like we talked about uh i believe it was the last episode um, you want to be, you, you have to step up. You have to be that one to really set the standard that you're going to be the one to help the community grow and uh, be the face of the franchise mm -hmm. for, say, UG, to make these new games that everybody kind of, that wants them to be here, but does nothing about helping them stay. Oh, I can't it, stand that, man. That burns me up the most when I, like, like, I'm not, I don't get mad at the person. I get mad of, like, the concept. Like, yo, man, you should be running Tekken's on Friday, but what? Okay, you play Tekken. How come you just don't come on Friday? Oh, I uh, and they oh, can't come up with. There's no know, one here. It doesn't like, matter. You know what? Show up there if there's one person. Like if mm -hmm. the because you know one person turns into two, mm -hmm. two turns into four, so on and so forth. Like um, mm -hmm. Smash Wii U on Tuesdays started with three people. I know yep. ex Prina, Baroness, Coke. and no, no, and Keezer. Oh, okay. The first three people that ever came to my weekly, and there were for I think the first three weeks it was just them three, and then Captain Awesome, and then like other people, and then Nelvin. <laughs> Captain it, Awesome. Hey oh man, God. like it doesn't matter. Like yeah, no, no, it, no, I I agree. Like it's it just takes work. It like we didn't get to to twenty people until like week fifteen or something. Like mm. it takes time, man. Mm. People just don't people just don't have patience, dude. Yeah, like everybody, like, you know, everybody wants the those big numbers. Everybody will look at something like a two GG, which is already at a hundred plus weekly uh, attendance regularly. A, yeah. uh, you know, a Xanadu that has a hundred plus attendance weekly. They got there by constantly doing it. They weren't always there. They weren't yeah. always at that point. They mm -hmm. they may have had the faces that people know already, but some of those new faces, like like they only get built up through the repetitive grind of going. You have to be willing. To grind, like to take those days where you end up coming for like a five man weekly, play with those people, play with them a bunch. Like you need to like build interest because then they're gonna say to their friends, "Hey, I love doing this. You guys want to come with me too?" And then it just builds up and goes, goes, goes. It's like kind of similar to the, uh, you know, it's 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 a, tr it's a trickle down effect. Like you need to be able to yeah. have people walk out the door and go, "I want to bring people here too." Yeah, exactly. Because that's the only way it gets out. Word of mouth. I mean, advertisement does so much, but word of mouth amongst the players itself, the consumers, is really what matters, especially when it comes to a fighting game community really thriving. And the fact that there's a real lackluster amount of people when it comes to trying to do that, particularly locally, like you have to be able to be that one to take that extra time out of your life mm -hmm. to make it so these things can work like a marvel dbz is going to be a little bit different i think just because it's dbz yeah there's just like a, there's gonna even be if, if you're just base. if you're not a fan of like if you just don't play fighters but you're a big dbz fan mm -hmm. like you may just like even be like that casual player that just comes out like oh i just love dbz yep. so like definitely we're definitely starting it uh it will be on fridays once it comes out so mm -hmm. look forward to that that'll be awesome yeah that one that's in, that's gonna be an instant success like i i, can, I don't see that not working yeah. any scene anywhere that decides to start that in a state is pretty much got like a huge footing available to you mm -hmm. you need to cash in on that quickly yeah. before people fall off on it what do you know the exact date it's coming out february not off the top of my head but yeah pretty early sure february or something like that i thought it was late february well, i don't know it's somewhere once i find a date i'll make a post of like when we're gonna do like a monthly mm -hmm. or something and yep. I'll, I'll figure it out i'll definitely be here uh that, that's that's for damn sure uh you know i'm gonna be learning how to commentate that but also <laughs> you're gonna get your ass spanked by my kid boo but um uh you know i can't wait for that like it's just the you know whether you like anime fighters or not majority of people love 
the crazy nonsense of DBZ. So I think that one will really, yeah, really think, pick yeah. up really quick. Yeah. Um, I think that's uh, I think that's, we think we covered everything that we wanted to talk about. Um, oh, and uh, one thing I gotta say is just like. I've been getting like emails. Like, I say like five emails like a week. I was just like, yo, Drizzlin, you're doing such a good job, blah, blah, blah. I can do this for you. And I charge like 125. If your if you're subject line in your email says anything about like, hey, I can do this and this is what I charge, I automatically delete that shit. I don't even fucking mm -hmm. read that shit. It's a bunch of like, so many people are just like, like, I'm doing all this work literally for free. Mm -hmm. You're doing all this work for free. But like, mm -hmm. you, like we all have an end result. Like, what happens if UG get, get, gets to explode? Where I can be like one day, like, yo, Ajax, come over, come to UG. I got something to tell you. Be like, yo, what's up? You can quit your job. I, I can pay you exactly what you're paying. And now we're full blown, mm. like, working on UG, like, 24 7 now. Like, you know, like, that's the position that I want to get in. But, like, if you're just like, I don't know, just stop asking me, like, do shit because you want to. Stop mm -hmm. looking for a paycheck all the damn time. It's a. Uh... You know, like, one of the biggest destroyers when it comes to a lot of communities is those who uh, see too much with not so much a level of greed, but feeling the need to be rewarded for building the communities. You see a lot of people like Team Spooky, for instance, in FGC, right? Or Bum or anybody who just hosts, like they've been hosting forever. Yeah. And it took a while for them to really hit the level of success that they have achieved yeah. at VG Bootcamp and stuff too. Most of those people who worked on VG Bootcamp and other stuff like that are like, you know, they, they put in excessive amount of hours, but those smaller local venues, mm -hmm. the ones that eventually so and succeed, there's a lot of people behind the scenes who don't get paid. They don't, you yeah. have to be willing to accept that it's a volunteer. Like, this is a hobby we all love to do, but yeah. we want to blow it up if we can. Yeah. And it, it's, when you're when you're looking too heavily into trying to receive a reward for what you're doing rather than for the sake of growing the community then really all you're trying to do is just become profitable off of something that you want to do and sure that's a great idea but when it's not your line of work it's not like you're not the one who owns the place yeah like it's hard like the the, the money's just for for the most part even on a lot of major tournaments is not really there it's a lot of t major tos and nationals who go neg but there's a lot of volunteers. Like, I volunteered at Shine as yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. a senior volunteer. I do upload stuff here because I just don't want to see this go. Yeah. I want to see this go as much as possible as far as it can with whatever help I can do. Yeah. And you need that in any gaming community to really set a standard to everybody around you to say, you know what? I don't need to get paid to do this. I just want to do it for the passion of helping. Like yeah. the fact that we we're lucky enough that we have um, Skyhook Dan, yeah, Dan one of the amazing. people with the CT on. identity crisis who's changed his name seventeen damn times. But um, now nah, we love Dan. Uh, he you know he hops on. He just goes right to the stream. He helps. Um, you got like we talked about Brookley for Pokin. Got yep. AG who regularly drives people out from the Norwalk area a long hike. Yeah. And he does it on a regular just so he can commentate for the most time. Like, because he wants to. And he also helps with a lot of local things. Uh, clip Clipboards. Him and Clipboards uh been doing all the seeding that they do over there. The Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. AG, forget. <laughs> this man, on his own free time, does all the power ranking stuff. Yeah, that... Like... <laughs> dude, I can't even handle that. When I see how much, like, shit that, that they have to mm -hmm. do or whatever, I'm just like, no, nah, yeah. I'm good. I just It's something that I just... Not that I will say I don't care about it. It's just, like, it's just something that I don't need to know about or something mm -hmm. like you know like i don't want to like focus any of my attention on it because they already do an amazing job I'm like mm -hmm. you you guys can do you guys don't know what the hell you're doing so i i don't need any putting my insight in it's probably hey, wrong anyway no but. no, no don't, don't, don't say that <laughs> but it's like not uh, is. <laughs> maybe but, um you know we we trimmed down the, the the pr command the pr panel to be as low of a bias as we possibly can to represent a real standard of being serious. Mm. Like, we want people to know that your placing that you got is earned, worth it, and was talked about, discussed with proper etiquette and numbers. Not just, I happen to be friends with this guy, so I feel like trying to bump him up a few spots. Mm -hmm. Or I happen to be in running for the PR. I, you know, I beat this person. This win matters way more than this other person's win. Like, we remove that. You can't be on a PR panel if you are in contention for a uh, ranking. That includes us. If any one of the four of us happen to be in contention like Clipboards was for a possible 10th spot at the last season, you must step down yeah. for that season. And um, 
uh, you know, but like that, that aside, that's got a uh, topic for a different conversation, but you know, could, like AG goes out of his way to have all of those numbers all together and then clipboards with all of his TOing he does here. Dude, the clipboards is amazing, man. He's fantastic. Like, he, Thank he, God he, he, he started doing the, the invasions, man. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, trying to run the tournament, run the stream, find the commentators, make sure that they're on point and like, and to cater up, like, oh, I need a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. And, like, trying to start, like, this is just so That's too the much, reason man. why I came to you at dude. some point. I was like, yo, do you mind if I hop on the computer? Like, yeah, I'll man. help oh you. Oh, my God, dude. And then it just took off from there. Like, I just kept doing it. Like, I, anything I could do to help because that gives a better picture for people when they step in. Yeah. And we all do it for free. Yeah, like, all I'm, I'm so tired of, like, messing up, like, the – I want to say messing up the names, but it's, like, not having the right names for, like, the mm -hmm. people who are playing. Man. Just, like – I get so aggravated, but it's just, like, people just don't understand, like, when, like, you, like for instance, like, if at a weekly, if Clipboard's AG and, like, you are not here for some reason or whatever, and then, like, no one else knows how to do it, I'm literally running all those mm -hmm. tasks to try to, so, like, it's just, like, a, yeah, it's a headache sometimes. Run, you got but, a tournament to run, and you have the stream to run, yeah. and it's, it, it really hammers down on you, and this happens at so many local venues yeah. where people just cave in and collapse in on themselves because there's no one who steps up to be that person to really set the standard and say, hey, I'm going to help. And may, I may not get anything for it. I may not get paid for it. But in the long run, maybe I will. Or or I'm doing it just purely for the sake of the fact that I care about this community and yeah. I want to see it grow because I have a passion for this game. Um, and that's what it takes, whether it be a five-man local or a hundred-man local or a 10,000-person national. It always takes the people behind the scenes who are willing to step up and make it run. Oh, okay. Um... Community, I think, yeah, I think we got everything. Um, mm -hmm. uh, monthlies, yeah, if you you play uh, Smash Wii U, monthlies you want to look out for, uh, gums that just happened on yep, December 2nd, Saturday, yep, uh, and um, Game Underground hosts that in, Ma in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Then you also got you know, Invasion here, mm -hmm. um, uh, and then you got Overclock that's coming up December, yep, boss, uh, December 16th. 16th. That'll be in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, up at Balance Oh, it's in Bash. Boston. I thought yes. it was like no, no, Springfield no, no. North. Or no, no, that's, that's um, that's uh, Gums. Gums is like Natick or something like that. I don't remember. The no, that's more. That's more heading towards uh, east, like towards Boston. I'm talking about oh, okay. Springfield, is straight up from. Yeah, you go all the way up. That's uh, where I thought Overclock was. Ninety-one. Okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then no, no, you no, got, no. and then we got uh, Zeno Saga up in New York, down yep. in New York. So those right are the three NYC. month. Those are the monthlies I would you know look out for. Where mm -hmm. We're trying to collab with those guys. So, um, yeah, you know what? Uh, speaking on New York, yep. I really love this whole NY versus NY. Dude, I'm loving it. Going on here, man. When I when I turned on Saga, I, j I was just in time to catch uh, Pug West versus John Numbers. Yep. Yeah, I'm like, come on, Pug West. We're all, like, I, I came in when when Pug was up two one. I'm like, dude, there's no way we can lose it. It's like you gotta win at least one yep. game. It's uh, it's Ugh. super healthy for the scene because ever since, really since Onslaught 100, right? We've, I mean, we've had the dynamics before because you get Light and Ling and like uh, Zion or mm -hmm. Tony or somebody or Right Grammar, uh, who go out to Zeno every once in a while because it's like an hour for um, uh, AG to get out there. Yeah. And then they'll let AG on hop on the commentary and they'll have some banter here and there, and it started really like it's planted like a little seed that started growing from there. Mm -hmm. And then Onslaught 100 happened. They all came out here. And that was when, like, me and Hangman were on commentary and AG was commentary, on commentary and anything. And we really got to have some more banter about, like, yeah. hey, you're in my house. Yeah, exactly. And then we go to Zeno, and then it just blew up. Yeah. We were at Zeno. Like, they, it was, uh, you know, Devin. Shout out to Devin 3000 yeah. uh, in that entire crew who, um, who did that uh, helper and everybody. They – did such a great job in such a small tight venue mm -hmm. and making you feel like it was like a mini national like yeah. everything was hype uh we swapped out commentary regularly d1 ended up showing up which was a big surprise mm. uh it went awesome um and then watching the the fighting and the banter and the cheering going between the two states and then it continues when they get to invasion yeah, the yeah. championships uh and invasion 20. it's really setting i think what is going to be the president for the future at not only Xenos, but Invasions, and at Overclocked, because that is definitely going to continue again at Overclocked. We've all discussed this already. It's definitely, like, we're, that banter is going to keep going, because a lot of them are going mm -hmm. up there. And then at the next Invasion, hopefully they come back out, and we keep this going. Because yeah, yeah. that's the type of thing that can maybe set up, like, 
a series of some kind or like more people who are willing to travel from these other states for the sake of, you know what? I lost the light last time, but I can beat him. So I'm going to go again, like a Jen. Yeah, when Jen came like down that. here on week 100, he, I think he took out light in Winterside. Jen, I think he did, yeah. I'm pretty sure Jen, I think, is up on light too. But <laughs> Jen ran into Aerial Ace. Well, and, I mean, uh, like, Chavo yeah, and the true. Championships. No, I'm just kidding. But you know what? That was a stack bracket. Um, But you know what? Jen, Jen is a hell of a competitor. All of them, uh, mm. Ralphie, John Numbers, everybody. And just seeing that dynamic show up uh, from them coming into our house and us trying to take out their house, it's really setting a new standard that I'm really much uh, really enjoying. And kind of it's going to level up this entire portion of the region to the point that I think we can eventually contest with like the 2GG viewership if it takes off. So mm. I'm really looking forward to hoping that – enough of you guys who happen to be in those areas like New York who come out here more often and we will definitely reciprocate. We will be down there as well. Um, you know, because if we have this type of entertainment value for viewers to see oh, yeah, where definitely. they like see this like whole, yo, I don't want any to take it out today or I want NY. They don't want that. They want any, but, um, you know, it's, it's going to give more people who happen to click on the stream for Twitch something to cheer for. And something to be entertained by, rather yeah, than yeah. the just same old, oh, nice back here. Yeah. By, you know, Light so, and Ling Ling again. The yeah, so, so <laughs> right now, technically, it's New York won any one because we won the championship with Mars and they won with John Numbers and, Ye and Zeno Saga. Yes. If we're talking uh, monthlies wise, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, so, they, they yeah, the next up. one will be Overclock. So yep. if, let's see who, see who takes that one. Hopefully, it'll be New England. It's going to be New England. <laughs> They better come up with everybody, man. I'm telling you. I think so. Hey, you know what? Um, actually, um, I'm pretty sure people like Captain Zach and them are going. That would be nice. According to Matty G. Uh, Matty G uh, being one of the New England premier players who has really shown his face over the past year along with Light and company and then Kool-Aid being back to being Kool-Aid. Now only – now removes the fact where it's not just Mars and Pug. In like Raffi, like yeah, yeah. that's it. Craftus doesn't travel enough. I, however, he's definitely in that conversation too. But like uh, now, we have those type of killers to be able to contest regularly with those New York players, mm -hmm. which is gonna make those out of region players that are further away really interested because then they're gonna th they're gonna think that they could take them out and hopefully lead up to much bigger events and much more. Uh, higher turnout tournaments that we can have around the area too all right guys i think that's gonna do it for episode mm -hmm. 10 um subscribe like follow all that good stuff Le leave your uh comments in the the youtube channel and i'll and i will personally answer them uh quick question i want to throw out there for you guys did mars ever beat the buzz in a tournament match let me know because i have no idea uh yeah. all right guys yes well, there he thinks he knows it, but I'm I want to hear sure from he I want to hear from you guys. Link the link the video that Mars beat the buzz, and let me know. All right, guys, peace out. Have a good night.